Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to your February 2018 astro update. It's Rena here. Well, as Scorpio, there's a very exciting situation happening as the month of February begins because we usher in the month with a blue moon total lunar eclipse in Leo that is happening on the last day of January at 11 degrees of Leo. And for Scorpios, this is your 10th house of career. And the 10th house is at the top of the chart. So it's your place in the world. It's how people see you. And with a lunar eclipse, it to me is like this wave of like everything that you've worked for kind of coming to culmination. Maybe you were toiling in obscurity and now you have your moment in the sun or rather the moon, huh, you could say. But um, there's it, it depends on the individual, obviously, how this plays out for you. But it is something where you could see, a, like I say, a culmination of all your efforts. And for some people, this may be a time when you really – um, have this aha moment about what it is that you've been working so hard at because Saturn rules this 10th house in the sign of Capricorn, the sign that it rules. And Saturn is all about hard work. And that's why it's connected to career. But you and I both know that people sometimes get influenced into following a certain career path. Usually this will be the case of uh, family influence, parent, parental um, guidance, if you will, but really influence, or even you could just say pressure. And I use the example of somebody who becomes a doctor or some other profession where there is a lot of preparation that is required um, and a lot of sa sacrifice on the person's part because the job is really all consuming in some cases. And even if a job pays well, if it's all consuming, it can really uh, wreak havoc on your life if you're not totally committed to it. So there, it's possible that some people will realize that they've been living somebody else's dream, that they're not being authentic in their own life. And they may have these accolades. They may have a lot of um, respect from others because of what it is that they do, but they feel this disconnect. And so that may cause a person to take a dramatic shift in um, their career uh, pursuits. Okay. And, um, for some people, it could even be a retirement after many years of service in a particular career. It depends on the individual. Yes, full moons are associated with endings. But there's also that association with some sort of culmination. So um, working hard at somebody and finally seeing the results. Um, it could be the, the, taking it to the next level. But there is a sense of, I would say, destiny associated with it. And it's not necessarily something that you can control. So it's more like what happens to you. And depending on how receptive you are to change, that is how you handle these eclipses the best. The people who tend to... Um, suffer are people who cling to what has come before. If you're open to change, you're going to be just fine. Now here's the fly in the ointment. Scorpio is a fixed sign. So you have to try extra hard to kind of roll with the changes. So that's what we're coming into February with. And Mars is going to be in Sagittarius all month long, and this is your second house of earned income, Scorpio. And so Mars is your drive. It's the activity in whatever house it is transiting. So 
in the house of money making, this could have some um, direct or indirect influence from that lunar eclipse where um, you've gotten the recognition, maybe you've gotten a promotion, and now you're busy, you know, raking in the dough. And it could be because you felt a sense of, um, you feel a sense of inspiration. You feel like your efforts are being recognized and that just inspires you that much more to want to better yourself. And in this case, it's about, uh, making as much money as possible. Actually, I, you know, have gotten to the point of, um, someone who initially studied astrology going into the tarot and now making the connections from astrology to the tarot, whereas I usually do it the opposite way. And I think of the Knight of Pentacles with you uh, making that money in the second house, because the Knight of Pentacles is a very persistent um, maker of money. Okay, and you could even say relentless when you're talking about Mars. So then on the 10th of the month, Venus goes into Pisces, which is awesome for people looking for love. This is your fifth house of romance. This is the stage of falling in love. And actually, there are two more transits to this house. Mercury goes there on the 17th. So Mercury is communicating with somebody that you have maybe that you're in love with, that you're crushing on. And the sun goes there the very next day on the 18th. The sun is just the general sense of well-being, healing, and actually could, could be um, an influence to your personality. So you take on the role of the lover, the the per, the romantic person, the creative person. The fifth house is also creativity, the artist. Okay, so if you are an artistic person, Scorpio, um, you may be especially inspired in February and you could be working on a new piece. Um, you know, something you may have a lot of ideas with Mercury there. Um, it's also home business and that's a form of creativity as well. Um, you can say, so there's a lot going on in that fifth house, but before these planets transit into that fifth house, they're in the fourth house and the fourth house is the house of home and family. So Venus going, Venus being there until the 10th means that, that harmony is restored. If there was any kind of conflict, especially with your mother, but family of origin in general, that could be featured. It, you may be doing something with your house, like, um, run of, uh, well, not so much renovation as redecoration. Um, I think some of you are actually, going to be um, closing on a house or moving, or you've already moved in because on the 15th, there's a, a solar eclipse in Aquarius, and that is your fourth house of home and family. And being a solar eclipse, we're talking about a very powerful new moon and a new beginning. Okay. And so Sometimes even I wonder about like, okay, well, what is the difference between a regular new moon and a solar eclipse new moon? I mean, is it like on steroids? Because that's what they always say. Is it really that type of an influence? And from what I understand, if you have planets in a particular house that do uh, aspect these, um, eclipses, you're going to, you know, the likelihood of it really, um, affecting you is much greater because I mean, just thinking back in my own life, looking at the eclipses that happened last summer, I personally did not, um, see any significant, change in my life in those areas that they happen to hit my natal chart. So my feeling is that it's more of an individualistic thing, especially if you have any planets in those signs, especially personal planets that will hit 
where these um, eclipses hit. Uh, but they have to be within a certain degree span too. So anyway, um, hopefully if you've been wanting to move or you've been trying to close on a house, that'll happen. You'll be able to buy a house and you're going to feel good about it because Venus um, gives a sense of peace and beauty. So it's may, may be the house that you always wanted. And so this is a a change agent time, suffice it to say, February. And even in January, if you're watching in January, you may already know this. You may feel a sense of, I don't know how I would put it, instability in your life, or if not actual instability, a sense of like something about to shift. And Actually, even though it may feel a little bit shaky on some level, Scorpio, I think the great thing about it is that it lets us know that we're always changing. We're always like things do not stay stagnant forever. And some of us need to have our lives um, shaken up a little bit because we may get into a sense of complacency. So realize that all is well, it's all good. And it looks like if you're looking for love, uh, this is your month, Scorpio. So um, have a great February. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Uh, one type of reading, my natal chart interpretation can be very helpful, uh, in s looking at some of these prime areas of your life, but doing so in a much more precise way with your exact time of birth. But in any case, have a wonderful February. Bye.